This is episode 49 of the Steady Trade Podcast with your host, Tim Bowen. That was like the golden age of shorting junk. And Steven Johnson. My biggest loss is like 5,000 because I'm a gunslinger newbie who hasn't learned yet. Today's episode is part two of a two-part conversation with Mark Crook. Great to join you guys here. Mark started trading about eight years ago. I've been trading, gosh, since 2010. The epitome of safe and steady. I'm certainly not a gunslinger. Mark gradually built his account to over $1 million. Where will your account be in eight years? Listen in as Mark explains how he did it. But first, let's dip into the listener mailbag. Today's question comes from Tim, and he asks... What's the best way to trade Bitcoin? So another question that we often get asked, and it's from Tim from Miami. I wish I lived in Miami. What are the best tips for trading Bitcoin? So, Stephen, I don't, I'm not sure. Have you traded Bitcoin? I've dabbled a little bit. But. For Bitcoin, I don't really have any advice. No, I mean, I've, I've traded Bitcoin-related stocks like Riot and the best advice i can give is when the when the u.s markets are about to close if you can see a kind of a, a breakout on bitcoin it's sometimes good to buy the stocks into the close the bitcoin related stocks because if if bitcoin does continue to break out overnight you will be able to sell into a gap up the next day and, and i had some success doing that with riot and uh, but i think you might be in a better position to, to well I, and i agree with you so so basically what steven has done which is a lot of traders have done is is they've looked to trade the bitcoin or cryptocurrency related equities which is and i totally agree with everything steven said but i think tim is asking more about specifically bitcoin and well what i have done i've only dabbled in it because of you know brokerage issues and you know it's the cryptocurrency world is still maturing, but really what I have done is I just used a really a breakout strategy. And, and if you get a, if you get a breakout on a, on a one day chart, three day chart, maybe a one month chart, you buy that breakout. And, and if, if it fails to continue to follow through, then you stop out for break even or small losses. But I've seen quite frequently multi-day breakouts, multi-week breakouts tend to spike. Now they, you know, end up trending back. But as long as you take quick gains, you can be in and out quickly with, with Bitcoin or any of the cryptos. Just look for volume, look for breakouts, because you don't have any fundamental news. Well, sometimes they'll get mentioned in the media and stuff, but most of these moves are just the herd pushing the price around. And if you see big volume and a multi-day, multi-week breakout, have a stop. You know, you know, don't go in without a plan, but there is money to be made there for sure. Can you can you show these uh, Bitcoin stocks uh, uh, or, or, or the the actual cryptocurrencies? Oh, yeah. Well, you can. Them? As far as I know, I know you can short uh, Bitcoin uh, via, I believe, Kraken. There's there's a couple brokers that aren't in the U.S. that do allow you to short Bitcoin. Now, the smaller, like the altcoins. I, I have to plead ignorance. I'm not sure if there is a, w a way to, to short some of the alts. Yeah, it's funny, though. At the start of the year, well, well both forecasting Bitcoin would be the next big thing, and it totally hasn't been. It's kind of, it kind of failed. It was a one yeah. and done in January. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, it's like he's trying to bounce, but if, you, if you're a, if you're a equities trader, a penny stock trader, you bring up that daily chart of, of Bitcoin, and it just, it, I, I hate to admit it, I mean, it just looks like a, a, a pump and dump with dead cat bounces along the way. So we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. So I'm still a believer. I'm still a believer long term. So Hey there, Steady Trade listeners. Want to know how guys like Tim Gratani and Tim Bowen followed in the footsteps of Tim Sykes, earning financial security and beyond by day trading penny stocks? Do you want to see if you have what it takes? Even if your name isn't Tim, no. then why not check out the Timothy Sykes Trading Challenge, where you can be personally mentored by these guys and other successful traders. If you're interested, and if you have what it takes, go to timothysykes.com and let them know that you want to work directly with Tim Sykes today. So what, uh, now this is always a question we always like 
to to ask, you know, because again, a lot of a lot of the traders are just kind of beginning on their journey here. Where did it? What was like your and and obviously rough timeline? It's you know it's covering ten years, but how long roughly did it take you to where you felt like you got it? You know where where this stuff started making sense, and then what? How long did it take till you were? you know, consistently profitable because that that's everybody's goal, you know, at least anybody that listens to us. I mean, I mean, anybody that thinks they're going to, you know, get rich tomorrow better just hit stop on this podcast. But you know, where, where did you, how long did it take for it to click and how long did it take to, for you to get consistent? Yeah. So I, um, I didn't really make any money my first year and, um, you know, up or down a few thousand bucks and, uh, I think it was only until 2012, so roughly a year and a half, where I really started to see uh, the profits, you know, come in and hear that, Stephen. Took him a year and a half to see profits. Did, 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 did you hear that, Stephen? Did, I'm, did, too, I'm too I'm too busy Instagramming the the interview. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You're you're too I'm busy you screwing around on your phone to hear that it uh, took Mark Crow, um, a millionaire um, trader, a year and a half to get consistent. Um, I'm promoting the freaking podcast. I'm promoting the freaking podcast to you, for you guys. But yeah, no, no, I understand. It takes a year and a half to get consistently profitable. As many times when you feel like you're gonna lose. Uh, and, and Mark's conservative, eh? Mark's conservative. For, and I'm on the other end of the spectrum. I'm totally freaking mental. Uh, so if I can do it in two years, then I'm sure anyone can do it in a year and a half to two years. Look, I'm sending a tweet. It's got your picture on it, just so you know. <laughs> I'm not texting people. <laughs> you, can't, you can't put my lovely face on there, though. <laughs> Sorry, I'm guys. Gonna, I, didn't, we'll find I, didn't, I didn't get my video. Uh, Mark, Mark's Mark's one of those. Mark's one of those guys that 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 that's afraid of the NSA, and he's and he's he's got the duct tape over his webcam right now. So, <laughs> even even though your your cell phone and your Alexa are listening to everything you say, but uh, Mark, I've got a big question for you. I'm gonna put it out there: the glory easy days for pump and dumps are gone. You guys all got a head start of everybody, and we're lucky. Air quotes, lucky. Maybe you weren't. Maybe it was harder than I think. But I definitely would say it was harder now than it was before. And Michael Good was testament to that. So, what was the kind of what was the next stage after pump and dumps? What strategy did you find? How did you find it? Because a lot of people find it through tracking data on Excel. A lot of people find it through watching endless video lessons. Like, how did you find the strategy? Because no one finds that first golden pattern. So. You, sorry, you're asking how did I find um, the pump and dump strategy or? No, nah, pump and dumps, pump and dumps are easy. Pump and dumps are easy. No, like after the pump and dump, how did you find another strategy? Another strategy. Worked? Okay. Yeah. Like how did you find the next pattern that worked for you? Well, I think, look, I think uh, pump and dumps are, are still, they've mutated and, and uh, they're not, they're, they're just, they're, they're here. We still have them today, but um, I think they, they present themselves in different ways. And, and one of the things that I found was uh, these hot sector uh, plays that, that just go crazy. And, and we had mar- the marijuanas, uh, the, the marijuana sector. We had, uh, we had the battery. Ebola, body Ebola. Cams, batteries, yeah. Yep. Yeah, we had the batteries. Uh, we had uh, Bitcoin, of course. And, and that's actually one of the things that, that I like to really focus on in, in, in webinars that I do for challenge students is uh, apart from, from these big percent gainers that, that we see, uh, is there a sector momentum catalyst that, that uh, we need to be focusing on? And that tends to be the, probably the best catalyst that you can focus on is um, – any kind, any stock that there are any group of stocks that are running uh, with sector momentum, and of course, Bitcoin was was the, the mo- most recent one. Uh, we had some marijuana uh, hype recently as well, but uh, but those type of plays uh, can become very uh, predictable when the sector leaders uh, really gain a lot of strength, and then you get these sympathy plays. And uh, it gets ridiculous, and you got some of these other uh, penny stocks 
trying to change their name. I think there was that uh, iced tea uh, penny stock company that that changed their name and said they were in blockchain suddenly. Yeah, they went. That, that was always a classic one. You can look up. They were. They used to be Long Island Iced Tea, and you know, it's like the that that was like the laziest name change ever because they could at least like come up with something better, but they just change it to, well, we don't make iced tea. So let's just call ourselves long blockchain. It was like, come on guys, at least, (laughs) at least get halfway original with your name change. Okay. But but, go ahead. Let's say for the listeners, just let, let's read, cause I don't want to be too generic on the podcast. So like, we know that sectors run, we know that the shipping sector run, blockchain runs, cannabis runs, uh, Ebola runs, even even printers run the the 4D 3D printers or whatever. But the thing is, what advice would you give to people to play these kind of sectors when they get hot? Is it multi month breakouts? How do you play them on the way up? How do you play them on the way down? Yeah, I mean it, it, it's it's really just a matter of of, of identifying uh, these these initial big players uh, in the in the uh, respective sector. And, um, and when you see big volume come in on some of these, you know, less known uh, plays, uh, particularly some of these penny stocks, um, do you, uh, I, I even keep a, uh, I should probably just delete it or not delete it, but I mean, move it out of my screen, but I still, I still have like a whole list of these Bitcoin runners. Uh, and, and when you start to see massive, massive volume come in, uh, like we did on RIOT and DPW and NETE and and MGTI and some of these other plays, that's when you know that 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 the sector is really starting to move um, at least from at least with the small caps, and so that's one of the the, the biggest thing as I always talk about is volume. Uh, look for these ma- big big volume spikes in in uh, small caps, especially, and as, as we've talked about, or as you guys have talked about in prior podcasts, uh, penny stocks have have become, you know, so widely traded, and uh, and uh, traders love them. There's so many, uh, so many uh, guys that are, are are trading this space now that um, there's there will be momentum, and there will be another sector that that gains. St- you know, gain strength and, and, um, and it remains to be seen what, but, but they don't come around necessarily more than a couple times a year. So can't expect to have these sector plays come around uh, all the time. Uh, China IPOs for, uh, example was actually a recent hot sector, but most of those plays were all a higher price. Now you're seeing some of these small caps like, uh, CLDC, which is really hasn't had much, much of a trading history, but it was a couple dollars if, uh, a few weeks ago or a few days ago, I might I might say. But now it's 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 run from two to seven. So so again, just recognizing uh, trends and and doing doing the homework, doing the research, and it's not very tough to to recognize what sectors are running. Um, and again, they're, they're they're not always. There will not always be something in play, as you guys know. It's it's a lot of the times there's nothing to trade, and it's it's perfectly fine to st- to stay away from, uh, uh, from your screen and 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 focus on 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 you know studying and and whatever else. What would you say is the ideal number of trades one should be taking a week when they're first starting out when they say they're in the first year? Well, I think, you know, in this crazy market, I mean, I don't know if there's an ideal number of trades, but I, I think um, two to three, well, let's, let's put it this way. If you're, if you're trading under the pattern day trade rule, and you only have five per or three per five rolling days. I mean, um, that's pretty tough. I mean, so I would say really only once a day max and waiting, waiting for those ideal, ideal setups. Um, 
You should not. Yeah, I, I always say, you know, if you're new, your goal should be like zero to two trades a day. You know, that even, even if you're under the PDT, I mean, you know, if, if, if it's, if it's a really busy day and you make, you might make three trades and you might have to wait till next week. But I always say, I mean, zero trade, there's nothing wrong with zero. And especially if you're new, less is more. I really think. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you, you you can't be uh, forcing trades, and and make the more trades one makes, the more mistakes that result. So zero to two. I mean, one shouldn't shouldn't even plan on doing any trades, uh, as you know. Sykes loves to to talk about coming out of retirement, and I think that's been a a kind of a a great approach uh, that I know some students sort of think about before they they make any trades during the day and i just have to say and i was, I was having a conversation with a guy a kid called sonny and he's coming on the podcast on monday i believe uh which will air in the future but i was having a good conversation with him and and there's a real paradox with trading i believe where you have to study 10 hours a day endlessly to learn how to trade right but once you start getting it and once you understand it you actually should do the complete opposite and you should do very little. You should literally just wait for the perfect setup and trade it and don't complicate it beyond that. And I think people get confused that you have to do so much in the beginning, but once you're an expert, you actually have to do very little. You're just pressing buttons. <laughs> what, what do you think about that? Is that correct? Or? Yeah, I think... Uh, to a degree. Yeah, I think that's kind of very well put that the, 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 a lot of the, uh, legwork is, is your research and your, your education, obviously. And, um, the, the trading itself is, is kind of, it's, it's funny because a lot of it is, um, really amounts to, to, to very little time. And, uh, you'll see, plays that that have these key moves uh and 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 the timing obviously is everything but most of the time these 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 a lot of these stocks are just not tradable and 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 that's the problem is is um the trip you know having your finger on the trigger button when there's nothing really there or uh you know that you one should just be waiting and stalking and stalking and waiting for those key times of day to to to, to pull the trigger but you can even have alerts for that you don't even need to watch you, you can just walk away you don't even need to be there I, I don't know i don't know i mean you're the millionaire i am not a millionaire i'm a i'll be the first i'll be the first him challenge millionaire loser you're, you're you're one of the millionaire winners but i mean how much how much desk time do you really think you need to be there for if you're only making kind of one trade a day two trades a day you really need to sit there the whole day or can you just be there nine or 10 and three or four? So that's a, that's a good question. I think for, for new, for newer uh, students starting out, I mean, I think uh, it's still important to, to, to see how these ideal plays uh, are trading out um, when, when they're in, they're in play, but if there's nothing in play, I don't see any, any reason to be in front of your computer. Uh, so uh, when, there's a, when there are good setups and, and hot sectors like we've talked about, then I do think that, that it's, it's important to, to potentially even be there all, not necessarily all day, but I mean, a good, a good portion of, of the morning and, and um, you know, the, the last three, two, three hours of the afternoon. But uh, but the way the way Tim has broken down, uh, Tim Sykes has broken down uh, the, the strategy and the framework of of the trades that we look for. It's certainly not necessary to to uh, to be there all day in front of your computer. Uh, there's just a lot of choppiness that goes on, and um, some students and some player some uh, traders like Roland and. Um, you know, Gratani, who who are very patient with their plays, uh, I think they they like to keep an eye on it all day, and and rightfully so. I mean, if you're in a trade, you've got to watch it 
pretty much all day, especially penny stocks. Anything can happen when you're in a trade, but, uh, but for the most part, I mean, you, you want to aim for that morning spike or that, uh, afternoon fade if you're shorting or the afternoon ramp afternoon breakout. Uh, um, but everything in between, uh, can be very choppy as, as, as you know, so I certainly don't think it's necessary to, uh, to be there when there's very little in play. So Mark, uh, you know, we kind of, kind of came full circle here, you know, again, congrats on being a millionaire trader. That's awesome. What, you know, that's ultimately everybody's goal. You know, I'm sure everybody listening, you know, that is ultimately everybody's goal to, to get to that point to a million, two million, ten million, 10 million, et cetera. So you started out obviously with Sykes back in the Tim alerts days, you know, back when I did there, there wasn't a, a millionaire challenge back then. Um, we kind of, you know, you know, we use the alerts, we use the video lessons that came with kind of a few years later Tim had the DVDs back then, still has those. What, uh, you know, what would be, you've been there, you've been through the gauntlet on a 10-year run. Kind of what is your, and I know this is a lot to put into a one-minute outro, but what would be your getting started steps? You know, somebody's listening, they found this podcast, they're listening to it, they want to get there. What, what's the roadmap? What, what would you recommend a trader start doing tonight? So yeah, that's that's a, a kind of a lot to think about. But uh, trading, if if you want to really get into this game, you have to, um, I think, understand the, the, the technical analysis. Um, that's very important. Understanding, um, you know what what this game entails is, is, is a, is a lot of risk reward and, and, um, gosh, I, 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 there's just so much. I mean, I, I obviously (laughs) found Sykes and kind of, you know, basically, you know, watch some basic intro level DVDs, uh, into these chart patterns. And, and so again, when I talk about technicals, I want to see what these patterns are. What, what is it that, that gives you an edge on, uh, penny stocks and, and, um, watching some, some, some basic video lessons about these, uh, these supernova type of moves, uh, I think is kind of a good place to start is to see what's possible, uh, what you're trying to capture, uh, in some of these, uh, plays, whether it is on the long side, I know a lot of new traders are st- starting with smaller accounts. And, and so the key would be to, uh, to capture the upside on some of these, uh, runners that, that, that can spike, uh, you know, two, three, 400, 500% or more sometimes. But, uh, so, so chart patterns under, uh, really understanding the technical analysis, I think is, is a good place to start. Uh, but now what would you, what would be your resources, books, videos, DV, you know, you know, what, what, what would be a good place for, for, again, for somebody to start? Sure. Uh, I think, you know, I started with, with penny stocking part, or I think penny stocking is where I first, uh, started with, with Tim's, with Tim Sykes DVDs and then penny stocking, uh, part duh. And, uh, you know, I, I, I love that stuff, and I, I really just kept going and watched uh, uh, all the all the DVDs as they came out. But um, look, it's it's there's a ton of information out there now. Uh, Tim's put out a huge library uh, of of uh, videos and and, I, and and webinars, of course, and video lessons. So uh, so that would be my uh, my starting uh, point would be to. You know, watch the, the 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 most basic DVDs, which which would be the penny stocking one and two, uh, and then uh, you know the framework is actually my favorite. So the framework DVD really put put things into perspective for me, uh, and seeing seeing how all these patterns play out, and uh, and I think that that gives a, a very 
uh, basic intro to to what this is all about, and and we'll quickly give uh, newer newer students uh, a good feel for uh, for how it all works and whether or not it's something that that they can uh, adapt to and and take advantage of. Uh, I think this is as we've said earlier it's it's a very tough skill to develop and it it's it's something that that requires a ton and ton of patience and uh that that's that's probably needs to go up there with 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 all of the above is the patience uh having the patience and the willingness to 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 really see how these patterns and how um, guys like Ritani and, and ducks and, and, and Michael good um, have, have really gotten to the, to the, the top uh, by doing, doing the, the, the analysis and, and, and ultimately uh, executing accordingly. Yeah, I'd like to kind of we'll we'll wrap up here and kind of finish with uh, like to cl- close the loop on Steven's point earlier. I mean, and we talk about this a lot with pretty much everybody, but one of the dilemmas with trading, it's just like his Joe Rogan and comedy example. I mean, you could go if you're in any big city, there's probably an open mic night tonight. You could walk on stage and do your comedy and the odds of you being successful are about well, not about, they're freaking zero. They're basically, you're going you're gonna to bomb no matter what. And I think that comedy travel that he talked about, that guy took five, six, seven years to get there. Trading is the same way. And I think one of the biggest drawbacks to it, and the reason we, you know, we always talk about this 90% failure rate is, I mean, you could buy, you could go to Walmart and get a $300 laptop and be trading today. You know, that, that's, there's, there's zero barriers to entry other than you need a little bit of money to trade with and you need a, a laptop. That's all you need. Just like the open mic night at a comedy. I mean, you could walk on there tonight and people don't realize that there is no such thing as an overnight success. And all of this takes time. It took me years. It took you years. Uh, some of the best guys, I mean, we talk about chat with traders a lot. There's some guys on chat with traders that are like, big money traders and they'll talk about five, six, seven years to where they got to where they were consistent. Yeah. yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, no, I'll just, I'll just couple that. I don't know if you saw the Joe Rogan episode, Tim, did you actually say it? Hey, I'm about a week behind. I do watch them all, yeah. but I'm about a week behind. So I haven't uh, seen you, it you have to watch it. I mean, it, it just completely is the absolute perfect uh, metaphor or synonym. Who's the, who the guest? I, I don't know him by name. He was like an American comic as well who's kind okay. of done the Netflix specials as well. But they were just laughing and joking, being like, it is gut-wrenchingly horrible. You want to be suicidal and jump off your balcony. It is so difficult. But the difficulty and the, the challenge in it is the reason why so few make it. It's not so much that it's really extraordinarily hard and trading isn't you don't need to be a genius or a metaphysicist to trade. It's not. It's that no one has the courage to get through the four, five, six years it takes to sometimes get it. No one has the willpower, but if the rare people that do have the willpower make it, and the ones that do make it because of the, the rarity, they make it big. And it was such a beautiful an- analogy, and I recommend everyone to follow Joe Rogan because he's a living legend. Yeah, I'll have to check that out. So, Mark, want to want to thank you. Um, you know, again, I, I I consider you a friend. I, you know, we, we we've done conferences together. I consider you a business associate, and I also consider you an inspiration. I mean, I mean, something that you've done put you in the rare air of traders, especially penny stock traders. Um, so, congrats on hitting that goal, and and thanks for appearing. Would love to have you back. You know, normally what happens with these episodes is. Stephen and I are boneheads, so we forget to typically we forget to ask like the best questions. <laughs> so um, we look forward to having you back in the future. We'll collect some questions, and uh, you know if you are listening to this episode, be sure to leave a comment, whether it be on the blog or on iTunes or on YouTube. And you know if you've got a question, you want something to Mark to elaborate on, we'd love to have him back. So thanks again, Mark, and thanks to all the listeners of the Steady Trade Podcast, and we will see you next time. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Stephen.
Thank you. What a nice close, Tim. You're getting better at this. You're getting better at this. You're getting better at doing the closes. Hi, this is Aaron, a.k.a. Double A Ron, from New York City. And I like to go outside and find a stray dog, preferably an aggressive breed like a pit bull or a Rottweiler. Then I get real close, stare it down eye to eye until it starts to chase me. Then I run. That's right, I run while listening to Steven and Tim on the Steady Trade podcast. You can register to win real, actual prizes at their website, SteadyTrade.com. And if you really like what you hear, give the podcast a five-star rating and write a glowing review on iTunes. I did, and this is how we say goodbye in New York City.